smoke the conquering mouse grab more with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here with yet another installment of Curves Boot Camp. And as you can tell today we're going to show you some some cool little tricks you can do with melons, right? So, but first I want to talk to you about Chris at So the Distance. Her channel has done some amazing stuff. Now, I guess her she's currently working on a so long and go check her out. Tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore is sent you to say hi. But um, now, another thing, we are not sure if we're voting when we're filming this, whether we're voting on a Zoom so date or whether we've decided on one. So check our show notes below here for the, the date, if there is one. And if not, if you join the Facebook group, you get to vote, right? Your vote counts as to when you want your so date. And we're also using the, the rooms feature within the Facebook group to have impromptu so dates with the members. And I've joined a few times and it's been a lot of fun. So just to let you know what's all going on in our channel and our Facebook group and all this other stuff. So come on in. We got to get some sewing done. So we're going to do melons. Now I've got four pieces sewn here, right? Because we're going to try and show you how to do a traditional melon and, you know, so the easiest way, now this is one of those fabrics that's reversible either way. Both of them look great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up and I'm going to start sewing with my quarter inch foot making a quick quarter inch seam. And now when I get down there to the point I have a, a mark on my foot that shows me where a quarter inch is, right? Now you probably, and you can pivot with the needle down at that point and come up the other side. And right off the edge, here we go. And they, these are, these are fun. They're pretty quick. And they're, they look great scrappy in a quilt. They just look magnificent. There's no, nothing more fun and a scrappy melon quilt. Now traditionally melon blocks, you put four petals into a block or you can make one petal at a time. We're, oh, we're going to go this way uh, where we're going to put four in at a time and I'm at my pivot point. <laughs> and when you're sewing a curve, I pick a spot at the front of my foot right to the very edge on my quarter inch foot and that's where I start sewing. Now this is where you know people say that well don't you find no I don't find I wobble I don't find I do anything. It's just it's all good. It's all good. Now it's nice to get rid of some of this interfacing that's been kicking around here for for years with this project. And this causes drag, this hand causes spin. This one spins. So I'm going through here, I'm holding this flat, but I'm pushing this along with this hand, right? Until I get to my pivot point, needle down and pivot. And now this one is, I'm pushing along with this hand and I'm, there we go. We're coming up to our point. Nice. Last one. We're going to show you the one where you do four at a time. I mean, you can do just one on a, you know, a clamshell. Now, the pattern template's going to be in the show notes as soon as I draw it. Because when we're filming this, this is not drawn yet. And once you learn how to cut a split, it's with curve boot camp. I think people are more afraid to sew the curve than cut the curve. Right? Okay. I think I need to go one stitch back. That's good. Yes. There we go. Pivot with the needle down. And there we go. Now, what you're going to do is this looks, this looks like it puckered, but that's fine because you're going to cut a slit in the, in the interfacing on the back as soon as you get rid of the excess, 
excess interfacing from around the outside. And I just grabbed scraps of interfacing. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't one of those things where I had to really think hard about what we were doing. So as soon as I slid it up the back, this thing will lie really flat. So, you know, there will be a gap in the interface and where there's not a gap in the, in the melon itself, right? So you can also use really lightweight muslin to turn something like this or a newspaper. Um, if your melon's not too large, you can actually use a coffee filter or, uh, you know, like any kind of lightweight paper that's more flexible, like coffee filters. I mean, I use coffee filters for a lot of things. And um, it's one of those things that's nice to have in a sewing room and not have a coffee pot for it. Okay. So let me just get the rest of this off. And yeah. How is your day going out today? I'm my day is going really well. We've been busy. I, we're supposed to see our grandkids when we're as when we're filming this. We we're supposed to see the grandkids, but everybody's sick with that flu cold thing, and it's just difficult to to gather. And when everybody's feeling so miserable, it's not COVID. It's a flu. It's a really bad flu that's going around. And uh, you know, so we're trying to. Trying to stay positive. We'll see them soon. and It'll be nice. It'll be nice to see my grandkids. Okay, so here we go. Here we go now. We're just going to open this up. Just like so. Right, just like that. Oops, and I've folded back on itself again. Now I'm not going to use this interfacing again and again and again. I do for circles sometimes because it's just, it works out that way. So I cut a hole, right? And a great big hole. And you're like, why would you cut such a big hole? Well, it's simple. Oh, I'm going to lose my spool of thread here. Hang on. It's simple. Because now I go right, put my thumb right to the point, and I pull this way, and I pull this way. Now, here's, where did that needle go? Oh, dear. Okay, let me find my needle with sewing needle with thread on it, and I'll be right back. Found the needle with the thread on it with a knot in the end, right? So we're, I'm going to have to iron these because they're just a little bit too funky around the edge. But here's where you take a needle with a length of thread with a knot in the bottom, right? And I take two, uh, two strands of thread to do this. And I go right up into that point of my, and it doesn't matter how many times you do this, right? On the cloth side of the point, on the cloth side of the point, you run your needle through. And now you pull your thread. Oh, I missed it. And I, my knot was not big enough. Hang on. <laughs> Showing you this really cool little tip. You gotta make a big knot right, to make this happen. Because otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, so I got a big knot now in the end, right? Big knot, and the big knot is right there, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go back up into this, and we are going to go to the claw side, and we're gonna pull that point out as best we can with the knot. And we're just gonna gently negotiate down with our thumbnail. And it's the negotiation, it's not, you're not pulling, you know, you're not pulling, but you create a, a sharper point this way. And now once you've got it pulled out, clip it as tightly as you can, and then you start your finger pressing away from the point. Right, just, just like that. And you can do your other ironing and whatnot here as well, but that's what gets that nice sharp point that melons, people that do melons just love the, the point, the, you know, the graceful curve to coming to a point. Now the other way you can make this not bigger, one, two, three, four, five, six, pull it down with your fingers, go right to the end, 
there's your big knot, right? I'll show you in again in a sec. So what you do is you try and wiggle that point out the best you can. Of course, it's not going to go. And on the cloth side, okay, on the cloth side, you get as close to the mark as you can, the point. I think I got right the point. And then you just pull your thread through and you give it a little more negotiation with your fingernails just so you get a nice sharp point, right? Then you press away, finger press away from the point so you get some, you know, nice gentle curve and some nice points going on. There, and you just want to point, you want to finger press it so that the, there we go. So you just see like a thread of purple on this side, the interfacing side, right? So that's where we're at. And that's your melon. Now I'll show you again how to make that knot. Hang on. Okay. Oops. Okay. Here we go. You lay your thread across your needle, the ends of your thread, the ends of your thread, right? Across your needle like that. You hold the very tip or the very, very end and you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you pull, you hold, press and pull the thread through. And basically it's an oversized quilter's knot. Okay. So I'm going to uh, separate this one. Okay, make a big hole, get in there with my fingernail as close as I can and push this as best I can. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to bust your, okay, one more. Okay, now I can see the tip there, but I can't spin, I can't turn it. So what I'm going to do now is again, I'm gonna go on the cloth side of this and not the interfacing side because the interfacing side you'll just rip. So you wanna go on the cloth side of this, kinda, you know, finagle your way up to the top. And sometimes you have to do it a couple of times, you know. And just gently pull back your interfacing and sometimes you, you realize that you've missed the point, but you're getting the point anyways. Right? There. There we go. And a little bit of thread and, and knot that's left in there, that's fine. That's fine. And then you just gently maneuver away from that point. There we go. And you want to make sure that you've got... Oops, there we go. We're going to go this way. Yeah, just like that. Okay, I'll come back when I get all of these flipped and I'll show you what we do, how we pin them and how we lay them out, okay? And one more time, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pinch, pull. There's your, there's your oversized quilter's knot. Okay, so melons traditionally are laid out in quadrants, right? So I have pressed uh, like lines, like, you know, to give me a middle of this fat quarter that I'm working on. So I want to lie them, you know, pretty much evenly spaced along the quadrant. Now I'll get my sharp pointy, the pointier end first, and just lay it down. Now you want to put your best point to the middle, because that's where you see it, especially if it's the only block. There we go. That's okay. That's about, uh, well, that one's better. Okay, so now, in what orange peel quilts or melons or whatever, what this is kind of, they either they can make them like just single squares, and I can show you how, to, and we're going to show you how to do that. But this way is an applique method, and this one works really well if you've got lots of variety of scraps. Now you want to see, make sure all the spacings in the right spot for this layout. And what I'm going to do, now that I'm kind of happy with where we're at, I'm just going to gently pin in this fabric. I had a thought of laying it out like a flower because I know I have some baby elephant material 
and put like in the trunk a little green stem and all this but I can't put my hands on it but oh well maybe next time you know make another, a, a fifth melon and make a little flower that he's running around carrying but anyways so there we are now we're, we've got our got to get our top stitching foot on because basically now we're top stitching and again you're steering now it doesn't matter if you're doing applique on a curved applique or whether you're doing actual sewing on app you're building a skill of seeing where that curve is now I don't start at the point when I'm doing this I try and start somewhere where it's not going to be seen as it's not quite as obvious I've got matching thread and I'm just going to one two three back up a little bit there we go now I'm going to go now this is kind of a fun little thing you can go right across and do the next one and I think that's what I'm gonna do and you're gonna go up the side of the other one okay and we're right there and you're just going to do that 1 8 1 16 top stitch you just want to just a little bit of a top stitch now you need almost like a stiletto at the points but you know oh, I need one more stitch there there we go and there we go now this hand causes drag this hand pushes causes spin right so that's how you get a nice smooth curve with your stitching coming back to that point And you go right across to the next one. There we go. And you just eye hand crank it because I don't want to all of a sudden be sewing it up. You know, I don't want my think my point to be flipped up like this, you know, like because I went too fast. Okay, get a little closer to this point. Okay, right at the edge. Wow, uh, really close to the edge. Yep. Oops, I fell off the edge. Okay, now this is there. Man, I have I fallen off the edge lots? And you want to take? No, I haven't fallen off that. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna take a quick. Oh. I still have coverage. I'm good. Let's grab the very, very edge of the... Let's grab the very edge of the work that I'm doing. Okay, so now we hand crank through just the middle. And I have pens like those. We've, we've discussed these before too on our channel where I have pens where we actually can color like if that light thread bothers you in the middle right because you're gonna see it on the dark you know then you can always go through and just like okay I can just take a pen and color it and I don't have to pull my stitching out take long like it doesn't take long at all like this melon will fit into like a six and a half seven inch square you know so I 
nice smooth curves. There we go. Let's pivot. There we go. And why is that? Okay. Huh, keeps and keeps wanting to. There we go. And as we get to the close to that where we started, back, forward, there we go. Now I'll pull that apart, get the little scissors and give it a clip and give it a clip from behind. There we go. Yes, I used green thread so you can see what it was doing. <laughs> and now I'm just going to take the pins out. Now see there's a little square right there that you could color out with dark uh, fabric crayons or whatever and then you don't have to worry about it. I haven't decided what size I'm going to make this block yet so I've left it just part of a fat quarter. Right so now that's where we're at so we would flip this over and we would see where our melons are because I've used green thread on the back and you can see that green thread or a lighter thread and now we can just pull apart this from the top you want to pull the the top part from the back part and clip it out there we go and we'll just clip there just like so and you want to leave a quarter inch seam and you want to clip the interfacing away as well as the back there we go and you just I know, probably should get the fabric scissors out. And this will give you a nice smooth finish. You give it a good press. And it'll be lovely. Okay. And that's, that's that. We've got, I'll show you how to, I'll show you the rest of this as soon as we get to our to da moment. Okay, this is our melons block. As you see, I've left it oversized because I haven't figured out what exactly size I want to make these blocks at. But I am using a variety of fabrics that I'm overrun with. And when you when you do scrappy quilts, you do occasionally get overrun with certain colors and you just got to work in that color family for a while and move stuff out. That's all there's to it. So this was a lot of fun. I will be doing just a single melon so you can see how these melon blocks are done you know because they're basically that's your melon block let me fold the last bit over and that would be a melon block but these are these are fun and they were just you know they didn't take very long but I'll show you how to do the melon block a very traditional way of doing it so that you know how to do both and then you pick whichever one you want now because I sewed over the center right I decided I would get my crayons out. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a link in the show notes for these things. Um, these have been a godsend. And yes, there's no purple in there. I use brown because as soon as I color the pale thread with the same value of color on the purple, the dark purple, it dis the thread disappeared. So there's some, you know, there's a valuable lesson on color value. And I'm not cover I'm not covering a great big spot here. I'm just covering little bits of thread that you can no longer see. Then I heat set it with an iron. So I'm gonna get my cameraman just to show you the very center of that so you can see how quickly that center got covered up. You'll see it. You'll see it. Okay. I hope you have a fabulous week ahead and you get lots of time to sew and have fun and giggle with your friends online. Come join us in the Facebook group room. Um, when you get into the, the Facebook group, you can go check out the room and it's a tab along the top. You know, if the tab doesn't say rooms, go to more and then scroll down to rooms. It'll show you where the room is. And then you just click on whatever's going on. If people are already in the room, it'll say happening now and you can come join. It's, it's uh, uh, something that we're doing for our Facebook group members. And it's a great way of getting to know other quilters from around the world. 
Anyways, you have an absolutely a glorious week ahead, and I hope everything is going well for you. You stay well, stay healthy. Okay, you take care. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now, and that Facebook group is got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay sew along we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get to sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.